We are headed into town to go pick up our Azure standard order. Anyways, check it out. Okay, so where we go to, this is the truck. It just got here, so we're gonna go and help unload it. I'm not gonna film because I don't have these people's permission to film, so I'm gonna go get my stuff, take it home, show you guys what we got. back to my channel. This is Rouse Rising and if you're new here, my name is Katie and on this channel I like to share with you all about holistic homemaking, lifestyle, and parenting. If you are into all of that, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below so that you can become a part of the Rouse Rising family. I would love for you to stick around and check out more of these videos. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have an Azure Standard Haul for you and also I wanted to talk a little bit about bulk food and how I store it, how I maintain my supply, when I trigger ordering or what process in my bulk food storage triggers me to order more food and that sort of thing. A lot of you have had questions. Many of you have asked me, how do you know when to order more food? How do you calculate and predict what food to order, how much of that food to order. And well, for me, it just goes based off of if I wanna try a product, I buy a little bit. If I know it's something we love, I buy a lot. And if you are curious about grains and how to calculate grains for your family, Grains and Grit here on YouTube, Felicia, she has a great uh, grains calculator on her channel that she shares. And you can go over there and check it out and it, Basically, let's you know you can calculate how much your family is going to need for the next year, so that you can go ahead and buy your bulk items or your food in bulk and save money and secure your food stores. I look at food, especially food that you can store for longer terms, as an investment because with grocery costs rising, we want to buy what the groceries cost now because with the prices rising. It's better to get as much as we can get now that we can use within a certain time period before the food expires and lock in that price for that quantity of food for the long run. And then when you have to purchase again, obviously the prices are going to have increased, but you're going to want to buy bulk again so that you can lock in that price for the year. That is one way that you're going to save money and that you're going to make the most of your bulk food haul. So I'll go into more of that after I share my grocery haul with you, but right now I want to go ahead and just show you guys what I got and how they packaged it. So I went to the drop location and the truck was there. We all worked together to unload the truck. The easiest way to unload the truck is as you pick up a product off the truck, you shout out loud the person's name. So I pick up a product, I turn around and I go, Katie Rao. And if Katie Rao is there, she's like, oh, it's mine. And then she comes and we, I give it to her and she walks off. And the next, you know, you just keep grabbing food off the truck and you do it like that. But we do it in a line. So it's single file. One person grabs it, shouts out a name, takes it and puts it in a pile if the person isn't there yet. And then we kind of organize it. Everybody's stuff goes into their own little pile. And we're fortunate that at our drop location, we have a building that we're able to put people's items in until they're able to pick it up. Um, but most locations that you need to pick up your items when the truck shows up. So you need to be prompt to your drop location to get your products. So if you have dry goods, oftentimes they will bulk, they will bulk batch pack all your dry goods into one box. They try to minimize as many packages as they can and get everything into as little packaging as possible. Also while you know, making sure that it doesn't weigh more than 50 pounds, that kind of thing. So in this box, and this is the only box of stuff that I got, but it has quite a few things in it. 
I got five pounds of Thompson Select, the organic oiled raisins because these don't stick together. And the last two batches of raisins I got, they stick together in clumps. So I was like, well, we'll try the oiled ones. I know a lot of people don't want the sunflower oil. I don't mind it, we eat sunflower seeds. Um, I know that oils, there's a lot of controversy about everything. If you look hard enough on the internet, you will find that everything in existence is toxic to you. So choose your battles and eat whatever you want to, you know, with moderation and with mindfulness and all of that. But uh, yeah, so I bought some oiled raisins. It's not a big deal. We're going to try these out and see how we like them. Long story short, we got some oil raisins. So we pop those up over there. I also got, ooh, dark chocolate chips. So I got the allergen-free dark chocolate chips. We have one child who has a peanut allergy intolerance. She also has other allergies and intolerances. So to be on the safe side, we just get the allergen-free dark chocolate. Works out great for her. She can eat those whenever she wants to. Azure also includes their next sales brochure so that you can look and see what items are going to be on sale for the month of June. And they also have in there their plant catalog so that you can shop plants. I'm not sure what plants are going to have available in June, uh, if any at all. I'm trying to look. Oh, they do. They're going to have plenty of plants available in June. So... I'll probably be placing another order for plants because in this box I have some plants and the deer ate everything that I planted because I didn't get my fence up quick enough. All of my baby starts are still intact because I've been keeping those inside or outside in a safe place. Um, but the deer haven't gotten to those yet. So we're gonna be ordering some more plants for June. We have a very short growing season so I have to be mindful of that. Okay, next up in here, and I thought I heard something rattling around. I got four more, I think that's all I got, four more lids for my large gallon size jars and also my half gallon size jars that I got. I grabbed more lids for these jars just to keep some in stock in case anything, not that anything will. I have a lid on one of these that's very, very old that was given to me by um, one of my friends. She gave me one of these jars and the lid has been through it and back. So I got some replacements for that jar and then just some backup lids. Um, you can order these jars on Azure's website. All right, next I got some broccoli seeds because I want to do broccoli sprouts. And to go along with the broccoli sprouts, I also grabbed some screens for my jars, so for my mason jars, so that I can easily sprout seeds. I've got lots of other sprouting seeds, so I needed some screens so that I could strain the seeds out and wash the sprouts because there's a process to sprouting and I'll share all of that with you all, but I just needed some supplies so that I could do that. Okay, I got more oxygen absorbers. These are to help uh, I seal a bunch of food in jars. So a lot of my long-term food preservation, I like to use my oxygen absorbers. I got some for my five gallon buckets, the ones that I'm gonna be stocking away for end of days, you know, long, long-term storage. 5, 10, 15, 25 years. And then I got some smaller ones and these are gonna be for half gallon or quart jars or smaller. Um, so you need to have the appropriate size for the container that you're gonna be using. Those help you store your food for a really long time. I got some mung beans. These are for sprouting as well as there's a few recipes that I've been eyeing that I wanna try. So I grabbed a five pound bag of mung beans. And I also grabbed a five pound bag of rye flakes. I've heard or I read in the comments in the reviews, rye flakes, a lot of people like to use these in granola or granola bars. So I thought we would give that a try just to switch it up from oatmeal. See how my family likes rye. You can also cook it just like oatmeal. So we grabbed that. And then right here, we've got our nine grain flakes. I saw 10 grain flakes at the restaurant supply store and their 25 pound bag was $3 less than Azure's, but I thought that I would give it a try in a smaller quantity before I invested in a larger bag. So I got a five pound bag versus a 25 pound bag. I know that I can use this in my bread baking as well as making oatmeal and other baked goods, making granolas. 
the nine grains will give you more variety in vitamins and minerals. So I try to have a versatile diet for my family. The more versatile we get with beans and grains for our long-term food storage, the more versatile nutrition we're gonna have in our diet. It is my belief that it is important to get a variety of color as well as a variety of textures and things like that in your diet uh, for all around nutrition. So we grabbed those two. All right, back here, I got five pounds of cheese. I've been buying 10 pounds of cheese the last few months from Azure and we have a little bit stocked in our freezer. So I like this cheese in particular. This is the Landmark Raw Cheddar because uh, it comes in these smaller packages and I really like that about this cheese. So we are uh, enjoying that because then I don't have to vacuum seal it into smaller packages. But you can buy cheese from Azure in the big bulk bricks. And when you do that, you can um, then divide it up into smaller packages and vacuum seal it for smaller portions later down the road. Back here, we got this 25 pound bag of black beans. These are organic black beans. Last month I did order these, but they didn't send them. They had them and they said they sent them, but they just didn't make it on the truck for me for some reason. And then I also got this huge 50 pound bag of sugar. And I'm hopeful that this 50 pound bag of sugar will fit in my five gallon bucket. Cause this is a very heavy bag and maybe I'll split it up into these smaller buckets because it is so heavy and cumbersome to move around. Uh, I also grabbed these two gallon buckets. Now let me tell you something. I grabbed two gallon buckets from Walmart and the Gamma Seal lids did not fit the two gallon buckets from Walmart. The Gamma Seal lids for the five gallon buckets did fit the five gallon buckets from Walmart, but the, five, the two gallon Gamma Seal lids did not fit the two gallon buckets from Walmart. So I have three Gamma Seal lids and from Azure I ordered three two gallon buckets. So now my Gamma Seal lids will fit on these buckets and I will be able to store, I'll probably end up storing sugar in these and then I'm also going to be storing sugar in, uh, well, this is what I store my sugar in right now. I've got it in here and then I don't have a large enough quantity. I just have a couple of these from where I grabbed a five uh, pound bag. And my five pound bag of sugar, I think it fit into two half gallon jars. So I can stick, you know, a good portion, probably 20, 25 pounds or more, maybe even 30 pounds into this two gallon bucket. And that'll work out really nicely for us. This is something that I actually didn't order from Azure because they no longer carry it in stock, but they do carry the Celtic sea salt. And that is currently what we're uh, using right here in my little thing. I have a jar of it still of Celtic sea salt. I'm down to my last quart of Celtic sea salt. So I went ahead and bought this Redmond's Real Salt. This is a 10 pound container of Redmond's Real Salt. I think next time I'm gonna splurge and get the 50 pound bag and just have a large supply in a uh, five gallon bucket somewhere. Down in the description below, I am gonna leave a link for you guys if you want to get some Redmond's Real Salt since Azure is no longer carrying it. You can visit the link down below and with my code Rouse Rising, you're gonna get 10% off of your order. And you can order this in salt shaker sizes all the way up to 50 and 100 pound bag sizes. They also have bentonite clay as well as uh, some other products. But if you wanna check them out with my link, save yourself 10% off, use code Rouse Rising. It's a great deal. I was happy to score it and I'm happy that I have that code to share with all of you all. Uh, and then another thing I'm excited about because Azure actually had a really good price on their plant starts. So, oh dear, we're just going to see how these, how did these fare the trip? water. Okay, so let's 
So I grabbed a few tomato plants, variety of tomato plants. It was a six pack of a variety. So we have some sausage tomatoes, some grape tomatoes, a blush tomato plant, a goliath tomato plant, We got a gold metal, gold metal tomato plant. And then we have a brandy wine tomato plant. So that was my six pack of tomato variety. I also ordered uh, an anise plant. This is a anise high sock. This is a perennial plant, so hopeful about that. I grabbed a stevia. These were, so this one I ordered, and then I got a six pack of herbs. And in that six pack, we got a stevia, we have a marjoram, we have lemon balm, which I cannot get lemon balm to grow from seeds. I'm not sure what's going on, I keep trying but I haven't been able to get them to grow. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on, but glad that I got a lemon balm. Excited about this pretty one. This is, this is a peppermint. So I've got to put this one in a pot because we don't want this to grow all over the place. And then I got some thyme. I use lots of thyme in my cooking actually. And rosemary. I use lots of rosemary. So these will be really nice because I'll be able to clip these and dry them and that will give us some herbs throughout the winter time. So these actually came packaged really well. They're a little bit thirsty. Some of them are a little bit, the tomato plants are a little bit thirsty. So we're going to get them watered. I'm going to put all of this food away and then I've got to go up to my garden and get that situated so I can get all these plants in the ground. We are in the middle of May right now. We're currently in the middle of May and we just had snow last week. This week the lows are going to be, actually the highs are going to be 41. So I'm still a little bit hesitant to be planting anything. However, I do have some milk jugs and vinegar, vinegar jugs and some different jugs that I have saved so that I can cut the bottoms off and place them over my plants like a greenhouse. My neighbor down the road does this. It works really well for him when he plants his tomato plants early. So I'm gonna give that a try. I am about 500 feet higher in elevation than that guy down the road, but that was his recommendation and I've seen his garden. I drive by it and I get my raspberries and strawberries from him because he's always given away his free starts and his garden is always beautiful. So I'm gonna go off of his recommendation and once I have the garden secured, we're gonna get these tomato plants in the garden. But what I did promise you about was talking about my bulk food rotation, how, at what point does it trigger my buying, and when do I add the food to my five gallon buckets. I wait until my container is completely empty before I refill it. That's my solution <laughs> for those of you that have that question. I wait till my container is completely empty. So whether it's a five gallon bucket, I'm not gonna refill that five gallon bucket till it's completely empty. Now. If I have enough in that five gallon bucket to put in a one gallon jar, a half gallon jar, or a two gallon bucket, I will go ahead and transfer that food to whatever smaller container that is. Then that bucket is empty. Then I will add the new 25 pound bag of beans or rice or grains or whatever it is. It's at that point that I will add it. Once I get down to where I can transfer the last bit into a smaller container, then I will add in a larger bag. When do, when do my containers trigger my buying? Well, it depends on the particular food item and what product it is when I'm gonna buy. So for instance, my oatmeal. I'm buying a 25 pound bag of oatmeal every three months. I could probably get away with buying a 50 pound bag every six months or maybe two 50 pound bags once a year. Right now, I'm not doing that because I'm still learning where my family uh, are eating habits and how much food we go through of a particular food. For rice, I know that we can eat up to three cups of rice, dry rice, at a mealtime with a little bit left over. And I know that we're going to eat 
three cups of rice probably four times a week because my family really loves rice. So I know that I'm gonna be going through rice a lot quicker and I'm not gonna do the calculation right now, but currently I have 150 pounds of rice uh, stored up in my home of sushi rice that we love because I don't wanna to have to deal with buying it for the next couple of months. I'm gonna see how long it takes us to get through that 150 pounds of rice for my family of seven and I'll kind of reevaluate the rice situation as we go through a bag. I just went through a 25 pound bag of sushi rice in about two months. So I know that every two months I can go through 25 pounds of rice. So I know that my family's gonna go through about 150 pounds of rice in a year. So that's why right now I have 150 pounds of rice because my goal right now is to have one year's supply of food stocked up in my pantry. So I went ahead and grabbed 150 pounds of rice for my family. And that's not eating rice every day. That's eating rice four times a week. So I should probably factor in eating rice daily for when SHTF. But right now I just have our yearly supply of rice for the quantity that we will consume at the rate that we are currently consuming it, if that makes sense. So it just depends on you and your family. If you're eating rice every day for two meals a day, you're obviously gonna be going through a lot more rice than my family does. And also depending on your family size. But for me, when I start to get low, so if I have half a bucket of something, that's gonna trigger my buying because I know when I get down to a quarter of a bucket, I'm gonna be able to transfer that food into a smaller container and then I'm gonna be refilling my bucket. So. Your food is going to be fine too, sitting on the shelf, not in a container for a few months. As long as you're taking the precautions of freezing your grains and making sure to kill any bugs or um, putting them in a container with oxygen absorbers. But if you buy some oatmeal and you have plenty of oatmeal, it's okay if that oatmeal sits around for a year. Uh, things like oatmeal and oats and things that have been processed through some kind of process are going to lose their nutritional value and flavor a lot sooner. So be mindful of that when you are buying your bulk foods and you can have oatmeal for a very, very long time. If you store it properly, you can keep it for years, but that's just something to be mindful of. And do you want to buy five years worth of oatmeal right now? Probably not because you may not consume all of that oatmeal before something happens to it. But could you buy a year's supply of oatmeal right now? Sure, go ahead and do that. And if you wanna set some back for a five, 10, 15 year supply, you can do that, but include that into your rotation so that when you go, um, if you need to buy more oatmeal and you start dipping into your 25 year food rotation, that you're replenishing it so that you're on a first in, first out rotational basis with your food. And not FOMO, not fear of missing out. I don't have FOMO. I'm not worried about missing out on anything. I do wanna make sure that I have adequate food supply and that I'm use, utilizing that food supply for my family and not wasting food. So we live by FIFO, first in, first out. Not FOMO, fear of missing out. FIFO, first in, first out. So our food is in a constant rotation. I go through my pantry probably quarterly and I reorganize all of my food by date because sometimes I get in a rush with my groceries and I'll just stash my groceries, my canned items, wherever, and I need to review that every quarter to make sure that my food is in FIFO, first in, first out, so that it is constantly rotating and that my expiration dates, the things that expire the farthest out are in the back and the things that are expiring soonest are in the front. It's very important that we do that. So I hope that this was helpful to you all. I hope that it gives you a little bit more of an understanding of how I rotate all of my bulk food stores and that if you have any other questions about that, you can ask them down in the comments below or if you have any suggestions, maybe a better way that or something I can incorporate into my food rotation habit, please comment down below. There's a fly in here. comes back, I'm gonna catch it, you watch. Leave a comment down below and myself or one of the great members of the Rouse Rising family will respond to it. We have so many people that watch this channel and I'm so thankful for that. Everybody's been so helpful and so kind down in the comments. So if you have any questions, we're happy to help. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up.
I want to thank you again so much for joining me today and checking out this Azure Standard Hall. I hope that you saw some things that you liked, maybe some things that you want to try in the future when you place your Azure Standard order. And remember, always buy a little bit extra for that rainy day in the future. Always make sure that you're setting aside some food for your family, for your long-term food stores, so that you can feel secure in knowing that you've got a food supply in case something happens to your job, if you're injured, whatever the case may be that you have a little bit of food security or food insurance. There's a lot of different things that we like to call our food stores, but just knowing that you can rest assured, knowing that you've got a food supply for a month out or for three months out, if you can push it to a year, that is amazing. And that is a goal of mine to get our food supply so that I can feed my family for a solid year without having to go to the grocery store. That is a huge goal of mine and something that I chip away at a little bit every single day. So it's not gonna happen in a day. You're not gonna build Rome in a day. You've gotta start somewhere and you can start small with a bag of beans or a bag of rice. You can buy some extra popping corn, different things like that that you can set aside in your long-term food stores. I also wanna encourage you to get a stockpile of salt. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. It's always a joy having you in my home where I can share with you our lifestyle and how we eat. I love to encourage people to feed their family traditional nourishing foods. It just really helps all around. I hope that this video was encouraging to you and that you feel more prepared to tackle your bulk food supply and that you're not daunted about running out of food, ordering food and that kind of thing. You know, as long as you recognize your family's consumption and when you're getting low, you place that order and get your food back in stock, then you're gonna be just fine. Just keep in your rotation stay a little bit organized, review your food stores quarterly so that you know what you have and what you need to get. That is my best advice to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, you guys. Bye.